Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split C DIY, and some of you, probably not a lot of you, but some of you may remember my very first video, which was about how to transfer your boot drive in your computer. Uh, and that was almost a year, that was about a year ago, actually, and it just so happened that a year later, I had to do it again. Um, I had originally upgraded from a 120 gig SSD uh, to a 250 gig SSD, because I needed more storage. And a year later, I was maxing out again. Um, so once again, I was doubling to a 500 gig SSD from my 250 gig SSD. But the thing was, there was nothing wrong with the 250 SSD. It was just too small for what I needed for a boot drive. And I didn't want to increase the size of my scratch disk. I wanted to keep that small because I'm reading and writing so much. So I decided to put it into my mom's laptop, which you see right here. It's an HP. Pavilion 17, 17 for the screen. She likes a big screen. Uh, I got for it back in, I think it was fall 2014. Uh, and you know, it's it's a good laptop. It's really nice quality. It's got good speakers, um, which has a big screen and speakers for like media consumption, watching Netflix, things like that. Um, but she doesn't have a lot of storage needs. Um, she mainly has a lot of PDF patterns for crafts and things like that. But that's about it. And otherwise she's mainly using it for web browsing and typing up every once in a while. So, uh, one thing though she'll complain about is that it's really slow to boot sometimes, and that's because it's using a mechanical hard drive, which can be slower. So, looking at how much storage she'd used so far, which was about 110 gigs, including the operating system, she was a perfect candidate for that 250 gig SSD. So, I decided to throw that in here, and while I was at it, I was going to double her RAM. She only had a one, uh, one stick of RAM running at 4 gigs, 1600 megahertz, so I picked up another 4 gig, 1600 megahertz stick. Uh, laptop RAM goes for really cheap, especially if it's DDR3, which most laptops, unless you have a brand new KB Lake or Skylake laptop, is going to be running that. I was able to get that 4 gig stick for about 20 bucks, um, and Crucial is a great brand for that. So transferring the data from the uh, mechanical hard drive to this SSD uh, was no problem at all. I use the same Samsung migration software that I've used before and I used again on my computer. It works really well, it's smooth, it's fairly fast, and it was no issue, um, and it transferred over right away. Um, the difficult part, though, was getting into the laptop, which had some challenges. Um, and let's take a look about how that went. Okay, so as you saw, I got into the, well, I took the screws out of the back of the laptop here, got the battery out and everything, um, and then, uh, this is actually uh, a day later, um, I stopped because I, I was struggling to get the, I guess you could call this like the faceplate off, um, and one of the reasons why is that I actually... I stripped a screw. I did. I, I messed up a little. This tiny little screw here, I don't even know. Let's try to... There we go. So that's stripped. Um, this is its, its brother here. Also tiny. It goes here. Basically this screw is holding on the, um, the faceplate. It's still being held on the screw. I can get to the guts. Um, without taking off that screw is just going to make everything a little bit more difficult. So that's not 
fantastic. I'm not exactly thrilled about that, but I also discovered, um, I was kind of following an iFixit guide, and uh, I kind of discovered that apparently all HP Pavilion, um, there we go. All HP Pavilion laptops are not made the same. And uh, the guide I was following um, had the RAM up over here. On this model, the RAM is actually right here. You can kind of see it actually a little bit. Um, the hard drive is right there. Uh, and also on the guide I was following, it was saying that you could pull the, the disk drive out and I, I couldn't. The reason why I couldn't get my, this disk drive to come out is that, and I don't know if you'll be able to see, I'll try my best. Well, it's right here, but it's screwed in. It's screwed into the body of the laptop, so you, you can't. Um, so not all, not all HP Pavilion laptops are the same, um, which I, I knew, but I also didn't expect it to be that different. Um, this model's from, oh, when was it? I think 2014, fall 2014 was when. I got it for my mom. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna basically kind of prop this up. I'm gonna see if I can maybe twist it even with the screw. Um, and I'll be able to get to the stuff I need to. That I'm not concerned about that. It's just gonna be a little bit trickier um, than it would have been if I could just like gotten this off. I cannot get that strip screw out like at all. And you can see like how, how stupid it is. Like look how stupid this screw is. It's only stupid because I messed up. That's the only reason why. It's the only reason why I feel like it's stupid. It wouldn't be stupid if I was able to get it out and be like, oh, these tiny little screws are no match for me, but look at it. It's tiny. All right, so I got open, I was able to swing the screw out. So now I have full access to everything. Um, I just took out these uh, the ribbon cables. I also took out the ribbon cables that are attached to the laptop. That was a keyboard, mouse, and power. Um, you know, the motherboard, it really does, it kind of looks like an ITX form factor. I know it's probably like proprietary, I've, but it does resemble the ITX form factor. Um, you can see it's all copper in here, that's for heat dissipation. Um, but yeah, so this is a hard drive. Um, and it looks like it's being held in by hex screws. Um, if you follow me on social media, you know I just got an iFixit um, toolkit, so that's definitely coming in handy. Just gotta find the right size. Looks tiny. Got it. Okay, so the screws are held in by um, TR6. And also, there was a little piece of like masking tape just jammed in there with the drive. I don't know if that's something that like manufacturing left behind or what, but I was surprised to see that like gunky piece of tape. Should just slide back in. This should just slide back in. Maybe not. I think it kind of goes at an angle. There we go. And then down. All right. Okay, the drive's in. <laughs> That's all set. Now we're gonna have to get to the RAM. The RAM is here. So we're gonna have to lift up the motherboard. It means we're gonna have to take out the motherboard. Oof. Oh, uh, here we go. Oh my god. <laughs> it's up. Huh. <laughs> Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, there's the RAM. Um, we're gonna have to replace it by holding it, which is certainly a thing. 
All right, here's the RAM. It's a crucial four gig stick. She already has four gigs in there. That's gonna be a total of eight gigs. this was successful after all that. Uh, to get a better idea of scale, here's the mechanical drive. Um, it is that two and a half inch form factor. Um, it's a Toshiba drive. Uh, and I'm gonna keep her OS and everything on here just in case she ever needs to boot off of another drive quickly and I'm like in between getting another drive in here for her. Now I did run some benchmarks before I upgrade the hardware and after. Now um, with the RAM, you're not gonna see a performance increase because it's the same speed RAM, you just have more of it. So I'm not gonna do a comparison with that, but her RAM's doing well. It's right in the average, right where it needs to be. The performance increase though came from that SSD, which if the original score on Passmark using Dismark was 745 and it was in the 37th percentile, and see there's a little red in the dial there. It was pretty bad, pretty bad. After upgrading to the SSD, we got a reading of 4,380. Pushing it into the 90th percentile, um, if you look at the differences between the, the individual scores of different tests, um, the disk sequential read originally was only 96, um, the new score for that is 469. Disk random seek was only five. Now it's 319. Disk se sequential write was only 104. Now it's 422. And now if we look at the difference between the two scores, it's 3,635. That is more, that is almost a five times higher score with the new SSD in here, which is located right here, I now know. Um, that's awesome. I'm definitely, um, to an anecdotal benchmark, if you will, um, it's just, it feels a lot snappier uh, clicking around and everything. Things are opening a lot faster, um, and I think she'll really enjoy that. And also, it'll increase the life a little bit longer. I mean, mechanical drives, you never know when they're gonna die. Um, solid state drives, it's a little bit more predictable. So if we see there's a problem, then I can either swap it out or it may be time for her to get a new computer at that point. Uh, but this HP Pavilion, although terrible to get inside, has held up really nicely. I haven't noticed any degradation with the keypad. All of the ports work really nice. It has a nice selection of ports too. And the keyboard feels nice too when you're typing. And then the speakers are also good. So decent laptop, just terrible to get inside and swap parts out. But that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, toss me those thumbs up and leave me any questions and comments below. Um, once again, to reiterate, don't be afraid to crack open, sometimes literally, but you don't always have to crack um, your computers to do upgrades or any other electronics to try to fix things. Um, be empowered and do it yourself always. Uh, find me social media, links are down below for all the behind the scenes nonsense. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for similar content like this. Until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY. Mm -hmm.